to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal with your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with shot and nails. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Confidence of a hero or a fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. <laughs> It means something. It means You know, that's my take on it. Like, what's yours? Protonic Riverdale! That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed it is. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It's a scientific fact. We were all up in your face. It is time for the one, the only... Protonic Reversal! Uh, this is a very special show. They're all very special shows, but this is a very special show with a good friend of mine, secret and explicit, <clears throat> Mr. Dale Crover, and I'm very excited to have him on. Uh, of course, the Mighty Melvins, he has a kick-ass new record uh, under his own name himself, and it's called Ratatat. Ratatat Tat, actually, technically. I think I'm missing a tat. <laughs> And he's a returning guest to the show. Uh, what does it say about the Mighty Melvins? Well, they are fantastic. I'll start with that. They are notable. They are uh, badasses. They are legends. And Mr. Crover is, in my mind, one of the best drummers of all time. Easy. Easy parts easy. He's also just a great musician, great guitar player. This should be a good time. Looking forward to talking to him about the new record. The uh, uh, Melvin's live stream stuff that's happening. All those things. All those lovely things. A uh, bunch of episodes of the show are going to be quote unquote dropping into the podcast feed if you are someone that listens only to the free feed. I guess be aware. Watch your podcast feeds. I don't even know what I'm, what I'm saying right now. But otherwise... Yeah, we're doing this show right now, and I'm very excited to uh, have Mr. Crover on again. He's only been on the episode. He's only been on one other episode, uh, one other episode on his own. Uh, another time with Buzz, and then he was on the uh, the Speed Round uh, 100th episode. So lots happened since then. Thanks to everyone for subscribing to the show. It helps people find it. Uh, thanks also to folks who have posted a review for it like on itunes or whatever just people find reviews things along those lines it's uh it helps a lot it helps quite a bit and that's something that i don't take for granted in any way shape or form you know it's not about an ego trip but it is nice when people enjoy the show when people find something in the show that that they like that's nice that's nice we like that uh patreon.com slash protonic reversal Helps the show. One dollar a month gets you earlier access to the episodes. So that's how that rolls. Let's start us off with one of the songs on the new Dale Crover record. What should we listen to? Let's listen to I Can't Help You There. Yeah. 
I Can't Help You There by Mr. Dale Crover on Ratatat Tat, the uh, the new record on Joyful Noise. There's a there's right. I I, uh, I dropped a tat when I uh, mentioned it earlier. I felt very bad. We regret the error, is what I'm trying to say. You got to roll your R's too. Ratatat. <laughs> 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 Mr. Crowva, welcome to the show, man. It's been a little bit. Hey, thanks bit. for having me. Hey, thanks for having me on again. Yeah, it's been a while. So we talked towards the beginning of this pandemic. And yeah, exactly. And it's, I realized it was some, it's been some insane amount of episodes since you've been on last, but it really, from a time perspective. Stopped. Yeah, yeah. I just don't, you know, what I'm going to do. It's, it's, it's this or just stare at the wall. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's kind of a kidding on the square sort of thing there, but uh, yeah, but you're one to talk, man. I mean, you've been you've been making good use of the quarantine times. You've recorded the, the new record mostly during quarantine, right? You got some videos and uh, yeah, you know, things along those lines. Most of that stuff was done, except for some minor things and mastering. Um, but yeah, then since since uh, then we've uh, done a video for the album, and uh, you know, it got delayed a little bit just because while well, we were hoping this shit would be over, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and that we could do actually do some touring or something. But um, you know, once that became apparent that that wasn't going to happen, then yeah, it wasn't that delayed. It would have been out in summer, and it came out. Um, oh, I guess where, where the hell are we now? We're we're in a, <laughs> a whole new year. Yeah, this is 2021 months, now. Time is a meaningless construct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I guess it doesn't seem like it, it was that delayed, but uh, but whatever. It came out and and it's doing okay considering, which is cool. You know, I got on the charts. Smell yeah, my I charts. Saw that. I got on the charts. <laughs> it's uh, wasn't it like best new alternative artist or something along those lines, which is hilarious. Yeah, isn't that no, cool? no offense. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm new. That's... I'm alternative. <laughs> best new music. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I mean, you know, I know it doesn't really it doesn't really mean much nowadays because you know it's not doesn't really equal a bunch of record sales, but it's a cool brag. Whatever, you know, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, was it Right Screen <clears throat> Murder that charted? It's great. Uh, at some point, like some time back, right? Uh, I'm trying to remember. That's kind of when they sort of changed it to modernize yeah. the charts. I think that's that was yeah the first time Melvin's ever charted was with that record and that's that was when we knew it was all over. You know, it's like it's, it's okay, it's totally totally meaningless. Yeah. <laughs> that's the spirit. Uh, so yeah, it was still it was still nice to see. It was it was it was like oh wow oh, that's yeah. so cool. Well, I mean for us it was just like oh another thing that we got to put the nail in the coffin of. <laughs> exactly. You know, we're 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 the death dealers. You know? the, the, exactly. So that's that that best new music or best new alternative artist is asterisked with that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, when when I think it's funny is being in the alternative charts is for me the the new one kind of seems very much like a rock record, and that's not surprising to me at all. Like, but it seems like just kind of a weird rock record, and not even that weird. I mean, no offense, but I mean not like Captain Beefheart weird, you know. <laughs> right. No, that's it's funny. That's what um, Carl from Joyful Noise is like. People keep saying it's a weird record, and it's like, well, it's, I guess it's it's weird compared to like I don't I don't know what's what would be on the charts. That's like completely vanilla plain. Sure. Yeah. So versus Miley <laughs> um, Cyrus. Okay, maybe. You know. <laughs> but <that's, laughs> I've, right. But but I've, I've gotten some really funny ones. You know, it's either like uh, totally uh, weird and experimental. Or easy listening. <laughs> easy listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a couple that were like, like easy. easy uh, this is like easy listening. You know, I mean, maybe sure, easy listening compared to like, well, you know, like throbbing gristle or something like that. Yeah, if you I listen guess, to Mare's you know? Bow, it's very easy listening, I'm sure. But you know, like, exactly, okay, sure. So, <laughs> I mean, I think maybe these people were into stuff like that, and, you know, and it was like, yeah. So, or like, like classic rock or something you know which i'm like I did. or jazz jazz is another one <laughs> um, jazz, but, okay. hey, yeah i guess hmm. it's you know well I, you yeah. know, people are gonna I hear, hear, hear everything gonna hear. train maybe in uh, um yeah right 
Yeah, maybe. No, I don't yeah, really yeah, yeah. Coltrane. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was gonna say like I, I love Coltrane. Not not to be a dick, I don't hear that at all. But uh, but it is something where I think just there there is very little. Like I, I feel like if there if there's a people talking about a rock record, there has to be this Im- sort of implied like oh rock is back and so and so was you know it's like attached to all these other like nonsense things like people don't think of the fact that rock can be like a living entity that can uh, kind of grow and change and bring influence from other things. And I guess uh, I guess what I'm driving sure. that is sort of like that that yes. I feel like with. The, yeah, with with the, I mean, with the record, I think that like you know, it is a rock record, but it's it's very much coming from your voice, coming from your informed experience, and it's something that uh, I don't know why it's so shocking to people that rock music can be inventive or just not like I don't know, Aerosmith cover band, <laughs> which is I guess is where I'm going with that. Oh, you still with me? You're frozen. All right. Well, we're having right. a great time here. Controversial. <laughs> Is that your side or my side, bud? Yeah, you're you're frozen too. All right, hold on. We're gonna. So uh, this this is the advantage slash disadvantage of doing uh, live protonic reversal. Always live. That's the thing that's different from the other shows. Sometimes I really question my decisions with that, but here we are. Of course, we are talking to Mr. Dale Crover of the Mighty Melvins, Dale Crover Band, and uh, many others. And we've now switched to a wired connection. We're going to see if that works a lot better. Okay. That looks I'm good. Back. Are you back? He's back. Can he's back. Yes, yeah, he's back. It's, it's um, right. Yeah, it's my, my crappy internet connection, I swear. Did you ever get that new um, router? That well, we you know, it got... It, <laughs> this will be fun to have fun talk to everybody. I was like, gonna say this is people looking for like details on the record. Like, what are they talking about? That's that's probably not the best yeah. thing for the show. But did no, you? Know? I mean, no. All of a sudden, it got shitty, and I don't know why. Like, it was it was working fine. Um, yeah, we got some updated gear, but now it sucks. So I don't know why. So when I was going, anyway, when I was going, there's that. Okay, I turned so it I was off going out. And now, and now, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say what I was going at with that long rambling thing before is just saying it's a, it's it's basically a weird rock record. Like it, sure. it, in the, the fact that like depending on what your frame of reference is, like I think it's basically just a rock record in the fact that, you know, there's verse first chorus verses, there's, you know, bridges, things along those. There's a song that kind of sounds like the Beatles, you know, cheap tricky kind of kind of stuff. Uh it doesn't sound like you know, crazy, unhinged, uh, you know, bizarre compositions that have like, you know, 12 minute passages and things along those lines. It's, the, it's, it's a fairly easy to understand record with hooks and verses and choruses and things like that. It's a nice progression from my last record. That's what yeah. it is. Well, on that last one, we talked about that last time, but that was sort of driven by doing the, um, originally you did that, that crazy, uh, the, how do you describe it? The record where you like had the, the different holes you played in different places to, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the lathe cut record that has, uh, different spindle holes and, and is see-through and has these grooves. that looks like it doesn't play, <laughs> but it does it's magic. Yeah. It, it looks like, it looks like when, um, like somebody's like destroying their overstock and they like drill holes in it, like for a hard drive yeah. or something along those lines. That's kind of what it reminded yeah. me of. <laughs> <laughs> But this right. this one wasn't conceived with that kind of thing in mind. This this was conceived with like uh, you know, hey, let's let's do some more songs and uh, you know, like no, yeah. But it does have a companion disc that's like that that goes along with it. That came out and, first. And did you find that the plan sort of presented itself as you went, or was that more just kind of uh, you had like a grand overarching vision to begin with on it? No, we didn't have a major plan other than just to do another record. You know, and then everything else fell in place. Because since then, you of course have done Dale Crover Band. You've you've have Mindy playing drums. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Steven. Uh, I mean, he played he played on the, uh, the other record too, didn't he? Even did. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Steven did. He played on a couple of songs on the last record. So he played on almost everything on this one, except for maybe one song, in which Dan Southwick played on. Right. You know Dan. Of, yeah. of I, I do. I had the Mighty Altamont. That's a. Uh, uh, yes, that's, a, that, that's always a great band and much uh, undiscussed, too uh, too under discussed. I don't know, not talked about it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst the pantheon of you guys' expanded universe, 
so you, but the, I, what I'm driving at with this is that like you had done shows and stuff since then. So you kind of have, did you find yeah, that the band right. was, and the songwriting was like developing its own voice apart from just like, well, let's throw this against the wall and see what sticks kind of mindset or. I mean, we didn't write anything together or anything like that. Well, that's not true. Mindy and I worked on, I can't help you there together. Um, and recorded it. We recorded that one. That might've been one of the only ones that I recorded. Mm, I'm trying to think. That one for sure was one of the first songs we worked on for the record. And I had her, yeah, I had her play drums. <laughs> um, and as she's only on a couple of, of the songs, really. And I made her play other things other than drums anyway. I made her play saxophone on one song. So, nice. um, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, most of them, I just kind of wrote myself and, and worked on it myself. Just that's, you know, when I had time. <laughs> in between doing everything else that I that I do with with Melvin's and Red and Red Cross, so um, you know I worked on everything and then just had those guys come in and do stuff on top of it, pretty much. Um, yeah. You know, like like Steve, I, I, and I would I would do I didn't do everything at once. You know, I would do a few songs here and there. I have Steve come in and play bass on it, finish it, and do some more songs. You know, so it wasn't like it wasn't done like in one session. It was done you know, multiple sessions spread out probably through a year and a half or so. You find yourself starting with the guitar or actually just starting with the drums? Depending on what kind of song it is. Hmm. You know, if it's a guitar song, then it starts with a guitar. <laughs> if it's a drum song, it starts with drums. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very, that's very sage wisdom, Mr. Krover. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guess the more regular songs or whatever, I, I'll record guitar first. Um, and and lay that down and then go play drums and then go back and maybe replace the guitar or just add more guitar or whatever, you know. Um, then vocals always come last. You know? But then there's a few songs on this record where um, I actually recorded, I even did demos on GarageBand, thanks to you giving me that little uh, hookup <laughs> thing so I can re record guitar. Yeah, man. You know, yeah, you're one of the guys that actually, uh, um, you know, uh, influenced me to to do stuff on on GarageBand. Um, I used to do oh, really? four track oh. demos and stuff all the time. Yeah, sure, but, sure, sure. You know, I don't use my four track anymore. You know, cassettes are it's just kind of obsolete or whatever. So, uh, the GarageBand was pretty easy to get into. And then there's a few songs I even wrote with the instruments that are already in there and you know, yeah. even even the drummers that are already there you know yeah the, the, the drummer in the box that they have is is pretty great like it's you can always kind of tell it's like okay logan's supposed to be bottom and like uh kyle yeah. supposed, like you can always kind of tell like what kind of drums are going to be based on how the drummer's dressed it's like, okay that's the metal dude right right <laughs> you know that's the uh the, <laughs> but then i would, the I raver. would fuck them up right you know? oh yeah and yeah and, and then you just take them and move them all around and like all right let's let's make you do right. something different <laughs> <laughs> yeah or 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 ream stuff through effects to where i don't even remember what the instrument was to begin with <laughs> right 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 well well and, and what i like about that is the technology even, even since you know i first started using it for for our demos uh and i gave you that interface like it's gotten the 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 drummer in a box stuff was like horrifically bad at first, like joke bad. And it's gotten, yeah. you know, it's, it's gotten more usable. Let's put it that way. It's gotten usable. And I, I kudos to Apple for figuring that out. Yeah. Well, even music memos are good for like, I mean, I come up with, you know, instead of having to, and it's great that you can just have, you know, a recorder in your pocket or whatever, rather than like trying to find your, your little recorder to record some guitar bit that you just came up with that you don't want to forget. Uh, and then you can put, you know, with music memo. Oh, and I'll do that. <laughs> so with the, uh, which reminds me, and if you're into it, I was kind of thinking we would do the thing with this one where we just go through song by song. You can tell me a little bit about each of the songs, uh, you know, maybe where the title came from, uh, any banal minutia or non-banal minutia uh, having to do we can with try. Uh, whatever as much as you can remember uh, and the reason why i ask is because uh you know you mentioned saving riffs uh and, and notes like do you have like a song title file or anything along those lines when you think of like a phrase or something like um yeah i mean i write stuff down that, that are potential song titles or whatever um but 
working with Toshi, it's always good because he'll force you to come up with a song title. He's gonna name the file something, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because well, he'll he'll always get he'll get mad by, you know, he, he won't let you go. Oh, this is called uh, song one. Like, yeah. No, no, it's not gonna be called song one. No song two. No song four, five, six, seven, eight. It's got a name. Okay. Uh, I wonder if he would have let Funk Forty Nine pass. <laughs> you heard about that? Right? Hear, how how I, they 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 originally they were like they apparently they they had that it was just a thing that they kind of had in between and then they had like multiple iterations of it and so that's how they just knew it internally and they're like ah well oh yeah Funk Forty Nine. I want to hear the other. I want to hear the other forty-seven. <laughs> yeah, what, 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 isn't there forty-eight? Isn't there 48? There is forty-eight. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to hear the other forty-seven. Yeah. So yeah, let, let's uh, let's see how this goes. If it sucks, I'll bail out of it. You know, that's a professional <laughs> broadcaster thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, rat tat tat. Uh, Mo clips is the first song, kind of a like a like a moody sort of set piece. Yeah, that one was Beginner. um okay. So I told you that we had done a similar thing with the uh wave cut vinyl that has the multiple spin holes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that yeah. was one of that was one of the songs for that. Um Mo Clips is actually a little beach town not too far from Aberdeen, Washington, where I grew up. Um there's really nothing there besides a general store. Um, the only thing I really remember about it is that it's the first place that I saw a Clockwork Orange. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's very so, memorable. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, did, did that blow your mind when you saw that movie? Totally. Well, because, I mean, I was already in the Melvins and had been to punk shows and had seen people with Clockwork Orange t-shirts and I didn't know what it was. And then um, the, at this store in Mo Clips, I had a friend that worked there and they, mm -hmm. it was a general store, but small community they also rented out videos and while he was doing his shift he's like you could watch you can watch some movies in the back room and i and i'm like oh you've got this move i've heard of this and i put it on i was just like wow yeah you that's know? yeah that, that's a hell of a one to sort of like rando watch <laughs> i mean i, I think, think it's I was, still amazing. yeah i was i was like probably 16 17 watching that movie and um and yeah and it's still one of my favorites so um but the song or title or any of that has nothing to do with that. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> but if Mo Clips was it was a town nearby, then maybe that's you know that that that's fine. Derivations and, and deviations are, are always good because I don't think I don't think we've done this with any of your stuff before, and it occurred to me that we haven't. So that's kind of why I was thinking we we try that with this. Uh, so second song well, is I can't. Oh, well, I'm I'm not done. Oh, don't, 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 don't. by all means, sir. <laughs> I didn't say I was done. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Oh, no, I was going to say, if, if anything, influence-wise, it, it reminded me of uh, 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 Twin Peaks and Mo Clips being, oh. ha having a Native American name and being very close to a reservation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, that, and that's, that totally makes sense mood-wise. That's something that, uh, you know, there's, yeah. there's a lot of Bada La Mente style mood setters uh, in, in so, Twin Peaks as well. I always, th I always think of, Maybe it's because, you know, I, I was in like uh, high school when I came out, but like I always think of Twin Peaks when I ever think of the uh, of the Pacific there's, Northwest. Yeah. There's an entrance to the Black Lodge in Moclips. That's really what it is. <laughs> nice. I just, nice and understandable. And now you know. So second song, Can't Help You There, the single we played it earlier. Tell me yeah. about that song. Yes. Um, uh Sort of a Neil Young sounding song, I guess, with a with a a, a Zeppelin bridge um, and song about uh, um, I guess I don't know being being crazy maybe <laughs> uh, um, seeing things uh, being delusional um, yeah something like that. You're a big video Neil fan, kinda, and, yeah, and, and, and yeah for and sure. The, and you were in the video. You were in one of his videos as Neil Young, right. which is something that most Neil fans can't say. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Did we I ever talk about that? I can't remember if we've talked about that in the show. Uh, I'm not sure. Can you uh, briefly recap how you came to be in a Neil Young video? That's uh, this. This is way back well, when. It's like ninety two. What about yeah? Whenever yeah, probably ninety two, ninety three. Um, 
And well, I had done extra work a little bit um, in San Francisco. They were they did some filming of uh, the Doors movie, the Oliver Stone Doors movie. Oh yeah, I remember that. You, do you remember there was like a big casting call that was you know like they needed tons of people for like a, a well the thing I did was like a, um, it was a concert scene outdoors and there's like a big bonfire and it's when Jim is on stage you know dancing he has all these visions or whatever um, yeah 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 <laughs> that's when he gets super Oliver Stoney so to speak <laughs> right right um, not the only time that was, happens but one of the more notable times it happens yeah they bust about I don't know how like a thousand people out to the middle of nowhere um outside of san francisco some secret location to film this and it was an all-night shoot and i think we everybody got paid 50 bucks and um but anyway the agency that did the casting had a phone number you could call to see if there was any work and um my girlfriend at the time after we did that movie had randomly called to see what was if there was any any extra work and on the on their hotline they said they needed people for a neil young video and we're like wow that's whoa that's cool and we almost blew it off because we were moving that day and, and you know like like carrying boxes all day long and, and <laughs> yeah just, you don't feel like doing anything but collapsing at the end of that day <laughs> right and 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 the uh the extra work doing the the doors movie was wasn't super fun <laughs> you know it was like yeah. like you know uh, barely worth the 50 bucks um gotta stand yeah, around for think, long periods yeah. of time and then like look like you're having fun <laughs> oh yeah it sucked. Um, <laughs> yeah we're it was, really having it was fun overnight <laughs> right and it was an overnight shoot too so that made Ooh, it, you know, yeah i just fell asleep uh, but anyway we went down to this hotel room down south of san francisco where they're a hotel room i don't know what it was like they probably rented out some some you know <clears throat> uh, uh, convention room or whatever and uh anyway i walked in and they were like whoa hey do you know that we're looking for somebody to play young neil young i'm like no <laughs> well so yeah and that was that was quite a surprise and, and I, I i got the part and and when I first met Neil Young, I was dressed exactly like him. <laughs> it was super, super weird. Yeah, how did, how did, how did the, did he, did he have anything funny to say or was it like acknowledged? Oh, totally. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it was like first him staring at me and like telling, telling the wardrobe lady, like, like, oh, you kind of need to point the, the sideburns. They had like fake sideburns. Oh, body. sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. I didn't have, I couldn't grow the, the Neil Young sideburns. You know, I couldn't do it that quickly. It was like, you know, okay, shoots in two days. You know? Yeah, yeah, sideburns <laughs> on demand. I didn't have that. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of time to get in shape for the part. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> like do do that uh, Daniel Day Lewis method acting, and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have showed up with like drawn on sideburns. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I I'm tried ready. to grow them. What do you think of my sideburn? <laughs> Looks um, pretty good, right? <laughs> right, and then. And then, so yeah, I met him and, and he was, yeah, he was really nice. And he was like, okay, so um, I've got some clothes I want you to wear. I've got these pants, right? Um, and let me tell you about these pants because um, the zipper's broken, right? And, but I've got a hair tie that's clipped on to the zipper. And so you, you pull the zipper up, right? And then you clip the hair tie over the button, over the button of the jeans, see? And that's how the zipper stays up, so. <laughs> he's like breaking down the pants logistics of yeah right so that was my first conversation with neil young was talking about his pants and, and yeah, the yeah, mechanics well. of them, them it's an important advice when you're going to be in a video you know you don't want to uh, don't want to be free balling so to speak free balling right, in the free yeah. world <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> that's pretty good uh if i do say so myself so yeah, so so that song's got a, a, a very Neil Young vibe. Um, it, it's it's yeah. especially, but I yeah, the, you said the bottom thing. Since you said it, I'm like yeah, it's totally like like bringing like the Led Zeppelin vibes in that one part. You know, good tune. Yeah. So that's I can't help you. There anything else on that one, or should we can we move on? Uh, we can move on. Yeah, we'll be here all night. If we don't. I was gonna say, <laughs> uh, tougher is the is the third song. That was yeah. and that was the first single, if I remember correctly, right? Is that, that the uh... first? Yes, first single and actually last song to be included on the record. We needed one mm. more song, and that's the one that actually Dan from Altamont plays on, and it was actually uh, earmarked for an Altamont song. 
but we poached it. <laughs> so it, nice. uh, it, which is fine because I mean, uh, and that's one that actually Toshi wrote the the music, and I wrote the lyrics for. Really? Oh, uh-huh. interesting. Yeah. Okay. There's one other song that's like that on the last record that he wrote the music for. Well, we kind of wrote it together, but um, but this one he already had. He had like this demo of this song, and 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 I think he thought that he would re-record it, and I'm like, no, that sounds great. I'll just let me put drums on it, and then uh, Dan put bass on it, and I and he he had already had like guitar, a little bit of guitar, and maybe keyboards on it, and then I remember when we recorded the guitar and bass, um, um, I did like the stunt guitar in that song. And um, I just remember, all I remember is like, I don't remember what boxes we were using or how, how we got that fucked up sound, but it, we were laughing our heads off the whole time. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I want to say it almost sounds like a data corruptor or a bit commander, but I think it's probably stacked with something. Like it's got a... It's something it's got... that's, it's something that's, it's broken, whatever it is. Yeah, I'll never yeah, be I... able to recreate that sound. It, it, it was, you know, like a dead battery or something was wrong with something (laughs) and we just were like that's that's so cool and just it was it was doing i mean i'm playing it but then also (laughs) and just explode and so but yeah we laughed a lot when we recorded that that part almost reminds me of um like six finger satellite that band from Rhode Island from way back when they had like some of their records, they had like little interstitial things that kind of were like, and they sort of, they sort of ripped that off from Chrome uh, to a certain degree, but you know, they did their own sort of spin on it. And like, it reminds me of one of those kinds of sounds where like, what the Sam, what the Sam hell is that? <laughs> you know, it's just not immediately identifiable in any way, shape or form. Yeah. So uh, next one up is Stumbla. Oh yeah. That's one of the, um, that's one of the uh, 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 garage band tracks. Nice. So and and uh, and yeah, and I and when Mindy joined the band, I think she had mentioned that she played saxophone. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> we'll use that for sure. And so I made her play saxophone on this one. Yeah, because when she plays in uh, uh, mod pods, she's yeah. kind of multi instrumentalist. Well, yeah, which I've never yeah. seen them. I've only played, we played with Dangerous. Oh, they're so great. So. They're great. And that's one of the reasons why I got on the band too, is because, well, I, I, I'd seen them and, and knew that she could do play bass and guitar and whatever. So, yeah. and, uh, so, yeah. interesting and then, drummer too. Interesting, interesting style. And like, yeah, she's great. You know, I knew, I knew, uh, um, I remember she was telling me that she was looking for people to play with. And so when I was, uh, go, you know, thinking of forming a band and, you know, wanting to get, you know, a, a drummer, <laughs> which is funny, yeah. um, you know, That's she was, she was funny. definitely like, like uh, uh, probably the first person that came to mind. Was she, uh, I mean, those are some big shoes to fill. Like, you know, or, or did you have to like put her They're in? They're not my shoes. I mean, I mean, no, it was perfect, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I guess it is a new band, right? So. Yeah. Right. But I mean, just as a musician, and and I knew that she would be good. I knew that she would be dedicated and and wouldn't flake. And she's the one that it was like, hey, when the fuck are we practicing? Yeah, That's, it's know, good so. to have that person. In the, yes. <laughs> your brain, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Let's go. Come on. So she's that person. And uh, sure. um, oh um, yeah, I guess I don't know what else I can tell you about that song. Oh, Other that's than, fine. Can move on to yeah. uh, Shark Like Overbite. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's some little jangly riff I had for a while, and I'm like, I don't know. And then I'm like, okay, I'll turn it into a song. Poppy, <laughs> um, probably the, one of the poppiest songs I've ever written, I guess. And um, uh, the title is uh, references uh, a, a dog we used to have that had a uh, crazy overbite, and when he's on oh, his yeah. back, he, lo- he looked like, yeah. He looked uh, like a, a, a Sharky dog. I he looked like Jaws. Yeah. Right. <laughs> sharky dogs. Yeah, I, I, that's, I think those are cute. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, see, that's a thing, right? Sharky dogs. Yeah. I, I think for me, I, I, I wish I'd been able to identify a Sharky dog. Like, they, <laughs> I, I met a, Maybe I've met an overrepresented amount of Sharky dogs in my life. But <laughs> what am I going to say? Uh, yeah, and that, and that one... Um, something I want to talk to you about on that one, but I forgot. Never mind. Uh, (laughs) 
so the next one is uh is it is it supine supine is how oh yeah goes. right yeah is that how it's yeah. that, that's what that's a word i've read many supine. times or said aloud supine yeah that, that one came from uh, joey osborne who uh, is the drummer in altamont and he said something about supine i'm like supine i never heard anybody say supine Sup- what's that mean supine <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fancy ass way of saying that you're laying you're laying down facing up that's, that's right <laughs> basically <laughs> as opposed to prone right yeah exactly it's just a, it, it shows you're very loquacious and you have a good dictionary <laughs> very, very important to so, establish that. yeah yeah and that one's got the electric sitar on it too yeah is that uh did you did you just that's the Coltrane influence right there yeah i was gonna say that <laughs> uh did you have the idea like, Hey, I want to have a sitar or anything, or did you have a sitar? No, I mean, that was just a drum track to begin with. That was on the, uh, the, the lathe cut and with the lathe cut stuff, we try to keep it minimal because it's, it's in mono to begin with. And, and there's not a lot of space to work with. So, uh, the less instrumentation you have on there, the better it's going to sound. And so, um, but with the drum bits this time, I wanted to expand on them after, after that and do more. And so, um, you know, that one I knew that I wanted, I didn't know what exactly. And um, uh, we recently acquired this electric sitar, um, I guess. I don't remember this, but Toshi says that I gave him some extra money for something for the studio and said, let's get an electric sitar. So I don't, I don't believe him exactly, but, um, That's but like anyway, conversation you would remember. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know what this studio really needs is a sitar, an electric sitar. Together. Exactly. So, no, I don't know. I don't know. But, but, uh, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, we, we, we threw that on there and I, I think it came out really cool. Um, uh, Tosh did this thing where the drums are actually triggering the sitar, like when the when when I when I hit a drum, it opens up this gate and the sitar comes through, um, and it almost it makes like it sound like it's a certain degree. Uh, say that again. It's kind of like that the Plan D record, like some of the stuff he does. With oh, the, totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Except instead of the it, yeah, the drums are triggering the sitar, and it sounds like it's talking. Right. You can. Uh, say that, that's that's in explain it to a founding father who just traveled in time for the moment. <laughs> like, like what are you wait what? <laughs> what what are you doing what is what is this like you know uh i'll never say we did, did that one oh no we didn't do that one. Oh, okay um right come on i was thinking i was thinking <laughs> yeah no i was thinking i was thinking it was uh, i i can't help you there so i'll never say i'll do this i'll do that um yeah, that song, um, that one's my favorite, I think, on the record. Um, I wanted to do an acoustic song. Um, I'd, I'd had part of that for a while. And um, I don't know, I kind of wanted to do a song that was sort of like Andy Warhol by David Bowie. So that's kind of the influence for that. Yeah, yeah, and I can totally hear that. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that, that, one, that, one, that one jams, for sure. Cool. Yeah. We, uh, um, well, I should mention that there's going to be this Melvin's TV thing coming out soon. Um, volume two. I was going to ask you after we were done going through the record. Right. Well, I mean, I, 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 quickly, I'll just say that, uh, um, that, uh, uh, my band's going to open and we do that song. So, so yeah, that's right. Uh, Oh, and also, I also wanted to say, since you were saying, you know, the I'll do this, I'll do that songs, uh, I, I always loved it with Ramones, you know. Was, oh, yeah. I, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. And the first positive song was Now I Want to Sniff Some Glue. Yeah. <laughs> There's no question there. I just think that's a nice tidbit of musical knowledge. Yeah. Uh, I want to be sedated. I want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's. <laughs> It was, they had they had a shtick and they they stuck to it and God bless them says the atheist uh, new pharaoh which one is this I can't remember uh, this is the one uh, 
that? Is, is it just drums? I guess I could play it. Uh, <laughs> there you go, play it. I guess right? I guess I could have been doing this the entire time, huh? I uh, didn't even think about it. Uh, let's see. Is this on? Ask you, which which song is this on my record that I don't? Like yeah, this to? is the one with the <laughs> exactly. It's got the weird like like room drums going on. Is I can't remember if it's like the short one or what. It kind of um, that's like two minutes long. <laughs> this is some oh, bit. It's, uh, okay, this. <laughs> Oh, it's got no, it's got vocals on it, doesn't it? Uh, th- like later on, I think, maybe. Or am I thinking of the other one? Yeah, it's just, it's just the weird. I think it's just weird drums. I think it's just like weird drums and effects. Well, that's what oh, it no, is. Oh no, you're then. right. There, there is vocals on it. My bad. Uh, uh, okay. What do I know? This, is, like I said, this is some bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> the vocals are all distorted and stuff, right? Yeah, it's all like kind of, <laughs> kind of. Uh, yeah. Like butthole Kinda surfers like, out or something, or who, or who, or uh, come uh, on, you know the band, one of your favorite bands. Uh, oh Christ, uh, I've got sparks in the brain. Uh, fuck, I don't know who are you thinking of. Who you thinking starts of? with a B. Starts with a B. Starts with a B. Starts with a B. Fuck, I'm totally drawing a blank here. Christ, uh, Brainiac. Brainiac. Ah, fucking. Yeah. What an idiot. Christ. <laughs> I'm going to kick myself off my own show. <laughs> <laughs> Course Brainiac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Th- this, this song was influenced by Brainiac. Nice. That's New Pharaoh. Yeah, and, uh, and now you know. Now you know. No one's half the battle. Uh, untrue Crime, <laughs> which makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> it was a it was a last minute because I, I can't remember what it was called before, but I was like, ah, it sucks. So, um, yeah, I don't know. This one, um, uh, this is another one that I kind of started uh, did a demo for, mm-hmm. and ended up liking it. And I and I think with I don't, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. I was gonna say that I just like used the demo and worked off of that, but I didn't. Like we actually, I think we slowed the song down a little bit. And but it, I mean it. It basically sounds like the demo, but slower. And uh, I don't know the uh, uh, Stonesy style song, kind of like uh, um, uh, um, oh shit, what this what's the song I'm thinking of? Um, uh, shoot, now I need to look. Um, um, I don't know. God damn it! Sorry, <laughs> I've lost it. I can't. I can't remember. I can't remember what what song that, that I was thinking of. But also, it, got, it kind of sounds like this band, Angel City. From oh Australia. yeah, you were talking talking about uh, talking about Angel City. I was never. I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar. Oh with yeah, them, but they're good. You should you should uh, you should check them out. They're they're uh, sort of like ACDC DC ish sort of, but maybe with yeah. more of a punk rock singer. There's a lot of good. Uh, there's a lot of good Australian rock and roll. There is. There's, there's a, a shit ton. <laughs> yeah, and they're, they're, they're pretty good about that rock and roll there down under. Uh, I, I love the the title on the next one too, the Bowie mix, because I I actually when I had James Williamson on the show, I couldn't help but ask him about the uh, the Iggy mix versus the Bowie oh, mix. Oh yeah. Because I was like, all right, dude, you probably you know, come on, can we talk about this? But uh, it, it, of course that's and. Why didn't I ask you? What is that in reference to, Dale Crover? Well, that that references my favorite mix of Raw Power. So I, you know, I, I appreciate listening to that new mix, but then I was like, ah, it doesn't make it any better. Yeah. No, it's just uh, constitutionally was, I'm, I'm, incapable of being played at a low volume. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. it's, it's just in the red. <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, or, or maybe I'm just used to that mix or whatever. I like that the guitar is screeching loud. And nothing else is. Yeah. yeah. Who mixed that record? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. What did What did James say about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had some thoughts on it. That that was actually I I was I was glad that he indulged me in it because I was like, look, I don't want to spend all this time in the past, but you got you got to tell me what your thoughts are when you first heard the Iggy mix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, his guitar is still loud and sounds like that, but no, um, no, it's just the whole thing's loud. <laughs> it's about the loudest re- record in the history of creation now. <laughs> right. 
And I think uh, anyway, I saw so, recently that he had actually used a Vox amp that was at the studio for that. Yeah, isn't I that crazy? Ima- imagine. Yeah, I always pictured it was like some Marshall just like blasting loud or whatever. So yeah, yeah, and and t- Tony was the one who was pushing. You gotta ask about it, please, please. Okay, sure. Oh yeah, well, how could you? How could you not? I mean, that's what he's yeah, most famous for. Of course for, I am. Right? Are you fucking kidding me? It's like one of my favorite records of all time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, so next one. Piso Mojado? Is that was that how you would say it aloud? Yeah, I think so. Piso Mojado, right? You yeah. know what that is, right? Don't you? Mm-hmm. I actually don't. Tell me. Come on, you see it every day. Oh, oh no, I know, but please tell the listeners. <laughs> you do know. <laughs> no, I don't actually know. I'm just doing the, the oh, radio fine. thing. <laughs> okay. Well, I know. <laughs> Why don't you? Oh, well, of course I know, but please, yeah, educate the listeners on this. No, what, 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 what is, what is that? Well, it's something that you see every day, or almost every day. Something I see every day. Okay. That means I wet see. floor. <laughs> have gotcha. you never seen the signs? Oh, oh sure. Like if you're at like a rest stop or something. Okay, okay, I get it. All right. Wet floor. Very clever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I almost called the record that. Well, the 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 uh, um, the, uh, the lathe cut is actually called. Piso Mojado, and that's one of the songs. Oh, okay, but and but this I, is one of those know, ones. Gotcha. After I thought about it, I, I would I probably would have named the whole record that. But then people would have been going, oh, "What is that?" Yeah, yeah but totally. Floor. <laughs> well, when you know, you know, and I guess it's 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 you know that that's a nice little Easter egg for 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 people right. that pay closer attention to signs. I guess I don't know who that's, but apparently not me. But, uh, you know, I took German, so what are you going to well, do? Well, type it. Now Now you have to type it into your search engine and look for images, and then you'll go, oh. <laughs> do I need to keep my safe search on for that, or can I do that? <laughs> well, I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do Google, I do. Google it. Google it, whatever. Uh, so then it's the last song, which is the uh, Kiss Proof World, which is the oh, Indian yeah. song on the record. It is. Right, yeah. That song... Um, probably the oldest song on the record, and it's um, it's one I had uh, um, I, I came up with it a long time ago, and just never finished it. So, but it's it's really old. Like I would say, uh, probably uh, early to mid nineties. So it's been kind of just homeless. Yeah, more or less. Something that I forgot about and then remembered again. It's like, oh yeah. So and yeah. And now it's not homeless anymore. Now, now it has a home and it ends a record even, which I think it's, it's always, it's always, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it, it makes itself known, but I think the last song on a record is very important in, in a lot of ways. It's like, how do you, how do you start? How do you end? You know, these are important decisions. Yeah. To- yeah. Um, that is a good, that it, it was a hard decision because originally that wasn't at the end of the record. I can't remember what it was <laughs> something else, but we changed it. <laughs> there you go. A tale, a tale as old as time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's not the only record that's come out recently. You had the uh, the other record you did with Diller too. With um, that's right. Uh, the Melvins, 1983. Working with yep. God. That's going to be. Yeah, what's up with that title? Is that, what's uh, what's that title about? Sounded good. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Buzz came up with it and showed me the artwork, and I was like, looks looks cool. Working with God. It almost sounds like you're subcontracting or something. <laughs> subcontracting with God. <laughs> right. Working, yeah, working with him, you know. Like, okay. Well, I mean, have you seen the, have you seen the album cover? It's got these, these crazy tornadoes. So, you know, that gives you any indica- indication of, of what working with God is like. So, uh, Right. I mean, especially if you're dealing with the, uh, you know, the Old Testament God who would just, seem to go off in like these crazy benders in, in these books where it's like, okay, this God sounds like an asshole. He's just like, ah, you know, I'm going to smite you, smite you, you know, like whatever. Right. <laughs> well, he is God. He can do whatever. You know? yeah, yeah. So who's going to stop him. Right. <laughs> uh, and you guys, you guys track that right before, right before lockdown. Yeah. Okay, right? If I remember correctly. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, well, I mean, at least the drums, and then we finished. Um, we finished the other stuff. We were recording it right before the lockdown happened, and we had Mike Dillard down here doing drum tracks, 
and it was right when shit was getting crazy. And yeah. all of a sudden we got a little worried that they might shut everything down, including the airports. And we, we so we're like, well, get, let's get your drums done. Just do everything, get it done. And then let, let's get you home on an earlier flight. So that was that. And then after it was safe enough to go in and work, well, I mean, it was just, you know, we're, we're really careful about going in and, 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 you know, being around each other. So um, we worked on it when we could, when we felt it was safe. Is it cool playing bass for that? Is that a, I mean, you don't get to do sure. that very, very often, except for, you know, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Not even anymore. No, I make Steve McDonald do it. But, uh, um, well, yeah, I mean, if you got Steve McDonald, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like I can play I just, drums, you know. <laughs> yeah. I just try to imitate, there, there's one song, there's one song on that record where I just try to imitate his bass playing. And I think I did an okay job. It was it's a, 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 a Harry, Harry Nielsen cover on the new record. Is there really? Uh, Which, yes. Can you reveal what it is? Um, uh, it's You're Breaking My Heart. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so fuck you. <laughs> so, fuck, yeah. so it goes along good with uh, um, the... Well, you I fuck, heard, around. You fuck Around. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah. So. Did you ever see that you know, Nielsen documentary? That one that came out uh, like oh, 15 yeah, years ago yeah. or something? Yeah. Was it that long ago? I thought it was sooner than that. No? I think so. Like, the one like, I saw, is... yeah. I, yeah, I saw one a few years ago. That That was pretty great. Um, yeah, 2006, man. That was like 15 years ago. Oh, was it that old? I didn't realize it was that old. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. You know. Yeah, I liked it. So it yeah, like we, we never we, used to have cussing on our records, and all of a sudden now we just have the, the filthy mouth. Yeah, and this I was gonna say is it Dillard that brings it out of you, or do you think it's now it's time? <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's just uh, that version of the band is is. Um, uh, forever uh, eighth grade humor. Because <laughs> he's stuck in junior high school. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, bold, bold move to start off with the, uh, you know, the Weird Al style Beach Boys yeah. song. Right. <laughs> so. Bold but typical. <laughs> <laughs> These guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell me about the first iteration of uh, Melvin's TV that you did for the New Year's show putting that together. Yeah, did you get it did you get a chance to see it? Yeah, I watched it uh, I watched okay. it that night. Great. It was awesome. Great. So Yeah, you know, in, in lieu of doing like a Didn't we talk on... about this? Oh, we didn't talk at the show. That's fine. Whatever, you know. Never mind. Right. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, in, in in lieu of doing like a full-on streaming concert, you can only do one. So, we came up with this idea of of uh, and just seeing if this worked off first off was like you know five songs we'll make it five bucks we'll include some interviews like we interview our, our, each other so you know that eighth grade humor comes out for sure um <laughs> some other goofy stuff and then and then there's also an opening band and it's kind of like um a cross between uh music laden the German TV show that, you know, you know, the, the show where they've got the psychedelic background. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, all trippy looking. The, yeah. <laughs> right. The show that, that it's the one where, you know, Black Sabbath were on there and they used their back line, the, the show's back line of orange amps, which caused every stoner rock band in the world to get an orange <laughs> amp because, because of yep. music Latin's back line, the German TV show. Um, but they had all these great bands. I'm, I love all those episodes. There's actually YouTube channels of that stuff now. So yeah, but anyway, meanwhile, like, Tony Iommi was totally a Laney guy. Uh, and, you know, but right. yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's like a cross between that TV show and you know that and the Monkees, you know. But the si and and it just being over the top psychedelic. Well, and and yeah. So what I liked about it, and I feel like. I'm probably a bit of a broken record about this, but I, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of like the camera up in the practice room and playing kind of thing, but I, I like it when somebody does something inventive with it. So I, I like that, you know? Yeah. Well, we didn't want that. We didn't want to have it right. like, look, we're in our house, you know, like all the, all the um, COVID videos just look crappy, you know? Like, yeah, exactly. So you, you jamming in your living room with some of the guys just, just looks like shit. You know, and and any of the other ones that I've, that we've seen too just don't. So we wanted to make it look good. Fucking practice place. 
Right. And so you have the green screen and the, the, the graphics are all super, you know, interesting, kind of cool and weird. Like it's, it's produced in such a way that it, it's a, it's something to look at. That's not just dudes playing in a practice room. Exactly. More or less. <laughs> Which is boring. Yeah. We get it. You're in a practice room and you're playing. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'm a real asshole. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I like well, it. I like the interview segments too, and like the and the, like the you know the gas station like bit or whatever I'm going to call it. Like I thought all that and it all worked. Yeah. It, it, it was it was more interesting. It was on the more interesting side of something like that as opposed to just uh, I don't know the boring side. Just yeah, yeah. So there's a new episode coming on on uh, Valentine's Day, which is coming up pretty soon. And if people want to get That's it, right. they go to Veeps Veeps, right? Is that the thing? Yep, Veeps.com, and there's yeah. And then you can purchase it, and then it'll, it's up for a week, so you can watch it for a whole week. And so it's going to be a Dale Cover yeah. band opening. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be the opening band. Nice. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, I think it'll be cool. Did we ever talk in the show about when you guys did the the three set thing, like way back when, like when you opened for yourselves? I'm not sure. I don't remember if we did that either. But I, I always thought that was very interesting because you had like the sort of the experimental set, and then you had like the new album then you have like all the hits <laughs> right, <laughs> is how I yeah. call it. <laughs> I thought that was great that was, that was, that was uh, pretty oh, unique so first I was like I was like what are they doing <laughs> not having like, an all right, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> no opening bands so which is kind of fun well and that's uh, you know I think we've talked about this briefly but like because you guys from Elvin's there's so many songs and there's so many even like different eras of songs. Like, you know, when do you decide to, you know, cycle one in or cycle one out or something? Is this when you feel yeah. like playing it or? I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> I mean. Or we'll remember. An old song. Oh, yeah. We used to play that one, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Do you ever like hear songs that. So maybe it'll change. <laughs> maybe it'll change now that we've had all this time yeah i was gonna say so so if you have time to reflect on things sometimes like maybe it'll be like hey you know what song's kind of cool that i kind of forgot about was uh you know this one or that one or whatever yeah it happens every once in a while do you think that uh well and you have some isn't there there's a is hostile ambient takeover it's getting like the reissue treatment right now is that right Am I yes remembering that? that's that actually that's a that's probably one of my top five records. You guys, I'd say I like that one okay, a lot. What song should what song should we play off that record? Uh, the one that's uh, dan na 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 na. Oh yeah! Called. Oh god! Right? Yeah, it's been a that long one, time since we played that one. That one that one's great. I love I love that one. Oh cool! Yeah, yeah. We haven't played that since Kevin's been in the band. Yeah, that's that, I, I threw that on the other day, and, and like I was I was like, oh yeah, this is a really solid record, and it's even got like. Uh, well, I told the story with anti, like you guys playing with and the uh, anti vermin seed story. Did I tell you this? Uh, I, I, remind me. No. So I was at a show. I don't remember. It was at Slim's. I don't remember who you were playing with, but like there was a lot of backwards baseball hats in attendance, and they were like uh-huh. moshing out to, you know, it was like aggro song, aggro song, you know, rock and song, rock and song, rock and song. They were they were, you know, really brody 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 owing it up. And then right in the middle of this, like, bunch of block rockers, you bust loose with anti-vermin seed. <laughs> and, like, you could just, the, the, all these dudes that were just moshing, moshing super hard, just got so bummed out, like, immediately. <laughs> and, and me and all the people I were with, like, yes! <laughs> like, it was, because they're all being kind of dicks. They were, like, weren't respecting anyone's personal space. You know, they were just, they were just being backwards baseball hats, as, as they do. Right. And I already liked that song a lot because I was like, wow, that's that's a this this one takes a while to develop. Okay. But then after I saw you guys do that live, like in the middle of between all the block rockers, I, I was like, yeah, that's that's a nice moment. It yeah, takes up a lot know, of space in the set list though. <laughs> sure. I mean the, but that's fine. You know, I mean you know that, you know, if it's a good song, then that's okay, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's, um, it's great. I mean, like I said, it, it it was it's up there as one of my cooler, you know, just random rock and roll moments. Like I tell that story all the time, especially whenever the crowd's being, you know, a pack of dicks, where it's like, oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
yeah, maybe that record gets ignored a little bit. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to uh, yeah, explore it. I guess. I wish I could remember the name of that song I was suggested, but yeah, whatever. That one's great, and I I think I hadn't heard you play <laughs> in like years. So, and that's also when you had the sign. I know. Well, I know the one that you're talking about. Once you did that, you do know what I'm talking about. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I see. I don't know the titles either. You know, play that but one song. Go, <laughs> but if you go like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bam, 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 <laughs> I can even fucking play it. <laughs> see, I remember it. But yeah, you know, there you go. I, That's a... I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no idea what it's called. But, but I guess see, you don't for, need for, to. For, for the hundreds and hundreds of songs that we have, and I just told you we haven't played that song since Kevin's been in the band. I remember yeah. it. That, that's like been, what, like yeah, 20 years or something? You know, not quite, not quite that long, but like 15, a long, pretty long 16 time. years. A long time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, gosh. But yeah, that, that one's, uh, I, I'm surprised by how few people kind of, uh, talk about that record because I, th- I think that record's really good. I think that was the first one with Toshi too. I think, right? It was. Yep. <clears throat> I think we did talk about that last. Time. I don't remember what we didn't didn't talk to. You. I should listen I to this show I once in a while. <laughs> I can't remember what we talked about either. You know, no idea. <laughs> and you remember uh, we we uh, we talked about um, Martin Atkins last time, and then oh, he was right, coming yeah. on the show, which was a, a direct uh, a direct result of this. So oh, I don't great. know if I told you that, but yeah, that was nice. Uh, what other what other songs have you forgotten about? With <laughs> no, uh, what other what other reissues are coming? Is there ever going to be like another senile animal one? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's in the works. Um, I think uh, Glory Portrait Treatments is getting a vinyl release. Oh, cool! Re-release. I was gonna say I have the Boner <clears throat> Records one. I think right yeah, from way back when. E- well, vinyl. Was there a vinyl release? I don't remember. Maybe I'm thinking. I'm thinking of Ozma. Yeah, because I don't think that. I mean, that one I don't think has had a, a vinyl release, a reissue in, in a long time, if ever. You know, though we for a long time didn't really have control of that, um, and there were there were copies coming out of it. So, but not anymore. Yeah, that's so. That's um, is that with the EP too, or is that um, just a, like uh, on no. its own? It'll be on its own, just on its own. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Is there any other um, like, like it, it, and, and the the reason why I'm kind of asking about all this stuff is I think that it's interesting to me that even without live shows happening, I feel like people are still for certain bands anyway, like buying records and things along those lines. So then you're in a weird case of like, you're almost like an Etsy store or something, <laughs> you know, <laughs> selling yeah. stuff, but. Uh, there's, then, we have other plans for sure. There's, there's going to be, I mean, we, we haven't just been sitting around, you know, doing nothing. So there, there's stuff. Can't really talk about it right now, but yeah, you know, right. there's stuff. I'm not going to push you. It's fine. <laughs> well, you know, We'll have to have something to talk about next time. Yeah, exactly. We've got to save something <laughs> for next time. So when you're, uh, when you're talking, about, like, at, at how many points do you have to, like, cancel tour dates? Like, like when, when, like, what, what do you think it's going to take to be like, okay, I feel comfortable booking a tour again? Like, everybody being vaccinated, you know, seventy yeah, percent, eighty percent, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not necessarily up to me, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, you know, realistically, it'd be great if if people can start doing shows in the fall. You know, that that I think that's kind of the goal. So, but uh, uh, you know, the, I've been saying this the, the whole time is, you know, I'm worried about the clubs. You know, hopefully they're going to be able to survive this, and and uh, there'll be yeah. some place to actually play when this is all over. You know, yeah, uh, I mean, we've, we've got uh, we've got uh, you know real. long-standing <laughs> relationships with with clubs all across the country. You know, places like Slims or Great American or or uh, you know whatever. So um, you know, ho- hopefully everybody will be able to get to do this, and, and we'll be able to play again. Well, in some of those places you've been playing for. 
like decades. Years. Like they've been around yeah, for totally. forever. Yeah, yeah. And then right. you think about them just being gone. It's like it's like, well, God, is anything even going to take their place? Like, what does that even look like now? Right. Yeah. Like like uh, Forty Watt Club in Athens, Georgia. You know. Yeah. We've been playing there since one of our very first tours. So, you know, I hopefully they'll be okay. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I know what you're saying with the fact that like places where livelihood is live music and like literally can't have congregations of, of large people, you know, how do you keep the doors open? And I've, I've seen yeah. like benefits. I've seen like, you know, benefit comps. I've seen, um, you know, lot, lots of stuff like that, but it's, it's considering that there doesn't seem to be any easy definable end date right now because of, you know, don't even have a, uh, agreed upon set of facts <laughs> to work yeah. with, you know, <laughs> that's rough. Exactly. Like it'd be yeah. nice if we could at least all agree that, hey, this thing is happening. This is a real thing that's happening. Can can we agree on that? No. Okay. Yeah. Thought it was oh, worth a try. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it still doesn't seem real sometimes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I realize it's I... been almost a year now since we've actually played a show, so yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Is that? But do you think that's been the longest you've? Oh yeah, for sure. Done. Well, I think so. Yeah, I would say I can't remember the last time we've, the, it's been this long since we played a show. Right. I mean, do you find yourself missing it, or are you just enjoying? Like, what was the last time you're, t- you're teaching your kids some uh, uh, pool? Was that, was that right? Remember correctly that we talked? I can't remember what we did. Well, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> like if you picked up any new hobbies, remember when everyone was baking bread? Everyone was like making bread. Oh yeah, you know, like, right. Yeah. Oh, maybe we're maybe maybe he was learning poker. I don't remember. <laughs> ah, poker. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, what would you say that? Uh, yeah. What would you was say? Bread. <laughs> yeah, but that was a thing, man. Remember, and then it's it sort was, of like, right. oh yeah. And now oh, uh, I'm gonna bake now. Right. I'm gonna bake a bake bread. And, and then uh, we, I think we did it too, and it was like we did it once. Okay, we did that. Yeah, check. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then now it's like, oh yeah, Reddit's attacking Wall Street right now. It's like, oh okay, so this is <laughs> a year into it. It's a little bit different now. <laughs> yeah. Is that what's Which going I love on? That, by the way. <laughs> I I love that stuff. That that's that makes me really happy to see that. Is this the games GameStop thing? I don't really. Yeah, know. yeah. Everyone just you know manipulating the market but just people are doing it rather than people on wall street and suddenly oh that's not okay we can't do that it's like, fuck off. Oh. so now, now they actually figured out how to occupy wall street and make it work. right exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different it's a different kind of occupy wall street for sure right uh can you um can you speak a little bit about i don't think we did we talk uh, you know i must stop worrying about what we did or didn't talk about can you talk about the um the Atlantic reissues, like getting those on vinyl. Oh yeah, um, yeah, that was really uh, thanks to uh, Third Man. You know, they they uh, commandeered that whole thing. Um, I know that uh, Ben Blackwell, who uh, uh, works for Third Man, um, he's also on the Dirt Bombs. Um, he's related to to Jack White. Um, he's yeah. a big fan. And I think was, uh, one of the guys that was, that was uh, a big part in getting that done. Um, because they actually got a hold of Atlantic and got the, uh, master tapes and, and, uh, which I guess is pretty hard to get a label to, to actually, you know, take their master tapes and, and give them to, to an outside company sure. that would that would that would uh, you know they, something they never really do but i think they you know obviously trusted those guys to to uh, uh with the tapes and um so yeah they're true the vinyl stuff's true mastered from analog right to vinyl so you know if you care about that kind of thing and um <laughs> no they're, I, mean, I mean they're, some, they're some great people, some some people do and that that's fine i mean you know um i you know if you don't, if you don't want to have any kind of digital thing at all, it's, it's, it's true analog. So, um, well, and right from the masters, right from the masters, and you know, yeah. If you're someone that actually listens to the vinyl rather than just buying it to have around, you know that that stuff does matter. Well, then certainly those guys care about that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they had it, they had it mastered. You know, they they took, obviously took it really seriously. They weren't just trying to like 
you know, uh, make a bunch of money and, and, and cut corners and that kind of thing, you know, that they're, 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 everything's deluxe with those guys. So, which is great, you know, um, I'm happy they did that. Yeah, I thought that was a really nice thing. And it's like, I'm not even a big, like, collector vinyl guy, but I was like, oh, that's a really, like, it's cool that those that finally get to be, you know, on, like, nice, a nice package, like a nice package that is for yeah. the people it's for. Right, and they really pushed for it, too. And, I mean, it would be something that would have been hard for us to get done, you know, just, I mean, I, we don't, I don't think we even know anybody that works at Atlantic anymore that was there when we were there. You know? Right. Well, exactly, because they turn over like uh, like crazy in places like that. And... True. I mean, we we didn't. By the end of us being there, we didn't know anybody really. That none of the people, there was nobody there that was there from the beginning, and and we were still on the label. So, you know. <laughs> what was one one of what's one of the most absurd things from the uh, Melvins stay at Atlantic that you had to deal with, or that you saw, or just was interesting or funny? Oh, hmm. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, we didn't have any super bad experience or anything like that. It doesn't have to um, be bad, just kind of like, huh, weird. No, well, I mean, something just came up the other day, which is pretty funny. Um, we When Houdini came out, we played, I think it was uh, uh, CMJ, or yeah, I think it was CMJ Festival in New York. And uh, for promotion, Atlantic had rented out this hotel suite, presidential suite of this hotel, and um, uh, and we played in it and had this party and I think they paid off some some uh, some of the hotel security to look the other way. But um, I remember that they were kind of hoping that that the cops would come, you know, and break it up. And was, then you got a story, right. yeah. <laughs> like some some photos some photos of it surfaced the other day on Facebook, and um, our, I'm still friends with our A and R guy that signed us, and. Um, I just chimed in because the cops didn't show up and, and uh, you know, it's like, it turned into like a crazy food fight almost. And there was like, I remember there was like Skittles ground into the floor and the Nirvana guys showed up and like threw a bunch of like clam dip around and stuff like that. Um, but the cops never showed up and I'm like, Oh, we should have, we, I guess we had to bribe the cops. Why, why didn't we pay the cops <laughs> to come and, come and arrest us? I mean, yeah, that's way know, cooler. <laughs> <laughs> because the whole thing was a publicity stunt to begin with. It's like, you know, it would have been, yeah, like, no one's get busted. Yeah, yeah. Busted for clam dip. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, uh, did you ever better. see the uh, uh, Super Bad? Did you ever see that movie Super Bad? Yeah, yeah. The he like they're at the party and like uh you know like the, the cops are like quote unquote cool cops and then they're like hey can oh, you just right. can you like drag me out and like just <laughs> I'm gonna say some crazy stuff but just like it's cool and they're like yeah yeah it's fine and so he's like you can't screw you you can't yeah you know, he's like freak freak and of course all the girls are like oh wow check it out you know like it's uh-huh. it's like all impressive because you know it's like oh he's being dragged off to jail oh my god right it's like that that man anyway that's a story about a movie I saw so the well, so then you think about those records and how like you know maybe like for some people like maybe that's the only people that like know from you i mean do you feel do you feel like um you know there's always going to be someone that wants to hear hooch <laughs> right like, well it, it, like yeah, that's yeah, the chance so i mean even for the longest time we hadn't been playing honey bucket and now we're playing it again you know and uh so i don't know yeah like we were talking earlier, like some songs go away and we forget about them. And, but I mean, you know, I don't know why, I mean, I don't know why it didn't, was gone for so long. You know, I guess we were just, you know, didn't want that to be the case where people always expected that, but um, I don't know. It's back there now. <laughs> are there any, are there any, and, and you never know what's going to resonate with people. Right. But are there any songs that you can think of that you were just like, Oh, wow. I kind of thought that people might, kind of be more into that but all right whatever move on oh that they would be more into something um yeah yeah probably i mean i can we can you can never tell what people yeah. are gonna like and what they're not you know i remember when we made lysol thinking like god oh, nobody's gonna like this i mean i liked it you know i think this is yeah. really cool but but um i everybody's gonna hate this and i mean i was surprised <laughs> that that people really liked it i yeah, mean people well, did it's... hate it people did hate it but, but then but it really did have you know I mean, people really do like that record a lot. So, well, it's like people hated yeah. my war too, you know. Like, and sure. <laughs> but I mean, I think that 
that record kind of, you know, influenced, definitely influenced, like, you know, like the Sleep Guys and, and mm-hmm. probably a lot of stoner rock stuff or whatever, you know. And and others, you know, I mean, I've 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 seen other people that have talked about that record, you know, and yeah, it's one of those ones where I just thought, yeah, like I really like this, but nobody else is going to like it, so, and I was well, surprised. And- and one what, and what of the things I like about it is sort of like, okay, so it's, it's you know, you sort of, you guys doing that uh, th- that part of, of what you do, that style. And then there's also like, there's a flipper cover that's in there where it's sort of like, oh, no, that's like sure. a bit of a tip of the hat, right? But it's sort of, and if you yeah. already knew a flipper, it's like, oh, well, yeah, cool. That's like, they're, you know, you can kind of see the cross corollary lines and everything with that. Um, yeah, but I guess I was talking mostly about, you know, the first song that's 18 minutes yeah, long. Yeah, the one, the, you- the one, the one. <laughs> I know, I know the one of which you speak. Yes, <laughs> that you can't skip because you didn't put any IDs in it. <laughs> well, and I think that that's—I mean—it's a bold move to uh, to start. I think when you start with a song like that, too, it's almost like you're daring someone to like like it. So there's always going to be someone that's going to be like, "All right, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm right. bearing down." <laughs> yeah. And then you close with the Alice Cooper song but near the end. Like it's a second to last sure. one. Right. And then it's like, that's, you know, I, for, even though I liked Alice Cooper band, I just didn't have that record. So for years I thought that was one of your originals. And I was like, Oh wait. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you know we, with all of our covers, we always try to make them our own. Uh, you know. Actually we play that record. We actually play a lot of still, you know, we still do the big long song, which, uh, so there wasn't any, there wasn't any song titles on that record. It just said on the back, it just said Buzz, Dale, and Joe. Yeah. And, and uh, um, um, I'm not, I mean, it, they had, there were titles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, obviously. It's not you know, on there. Right. So the first, the first song, the first long song is actually two songs. And it's the first one is called Hung Bunny. And then the second half, wherever you want to start it at, is called Roman Dog Bird. Not bird dog, Roman dog bird. Did, and did you already? You always have titles with them, and just decided not to include them because you wanted to have it just be, you know, kind of. The... I guess so. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it was art. It was art. It was an art yeah. move, for sure. <laughs> and then, uh, how did how, how did the company respond to that, or did they? Because eventually, there's the lice all. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was it was weird. I mean, you know, the, they're the Lysol company. I mean, you know, we, we didn't really realize that anybody would care or that 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 Lysol was a, a, a you know trademark. When you're, you know, a small punk rock band on a small punk rock label, you don't really think about those kind of things. <laughs> somehow, right, right. somehow they found, found out about it and and um when they contacted Boner Records about it and and they had to go to court and pretty much he had to just, you know, yeah, change the name, basically. So unfortunately, they'd already printed up a bunch of the, the records. So, you know, he had to go through and, and take the name off of all the printed ones. Yeah, so. that's, that's yeah, uh, whatever, you know. I mean, at least you can, I mean, I feel like it could have gone even worse. I mean, look at, uh, look at Tad with uh, Dyspepsy. You know, I mean, that was a, that was a real horror show. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, that one we probably would have known, but so I don't know what happened to those guys anyway. Did, did they get, did they get in a bunch of trouble? Did they, did they go to jail? Yeah. It was, it, it, it was, it was a bit of a thing. Let's put it that way. Um, it, 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 some, some, some it goes better than others for that kind of thing. And uh, I, th- I think they got the kind of the, the raw end of the stick, so to speak. Yeah, uh, for, that's for too bad. I mean, we just, we really just weren't even thinking that that would be a thing, you know. <laughs> how do you, uh, how do you figure out what makes a good cover in Melvin's? Cover song or cover yeah. art? Oh, no, I guess uh, both, but I, I was thinking more of cover songs, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, good question. I mean, um, I'm trying to think. I mean, yeah, we do so many. I mean, we've, the thing is, we've always done covers from the very beginning, and I've always liked to. And um, I, I don't know. It's just you know, it's, some people can't jam or don't like to do that kind of thing, you know. Um, but we always have, 
you know, and even playing with like, you know, Steve McDonald now, it's like, even if he doesn't know the song, he'll like jump in and try to, you know, he'll know it or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think he's do, uh, was it a Sway at Soundcheck? Oh, you knew he played at the show too. Uh, oh, yeah. A couple years back. Yeah, and I was like, wow. Like, and, and, you know, I love the Stones, but I feel like uh, not not everyone would know would even know that that's a Stones song necessarily if they're not like already a fan. So it's like one of those things like, wow, that's actually a really cool Stones cover. I didn't even think about that. Oh, right. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, is, is, a, is it largely based on like whether you can do your own take on it or is it like, hey, we really like this song. Let's do this. No, it's just whatever, whatever way the wind blows. Really, you know. <laughs> um I, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any. I mean, there's songs that we've always jammed on, that um, like for years that we may have, may have never even recorded. Um, one that came up the other day was uh, um, and forever we've been playing this song. It's just something that Buzz and I know, and it's a Montrose song on the second Montrose record called "I Got the Fire." Oh man, second Montrose record. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> it's, I'm the, it's I, the it's the one good song on that record. I was, I was gonna say, like, I, I remember not being super stoked on it when I heard it, yeah. but uh, I feel like Iron Montrose might a, merit a revisit. Iron, Iron Maiden did a really good cover of it early on. Oh, nice. So, yeah. <laughs> well, and that and that's like Green Monolishi. I didn't realize that that was a Fleetwood Mac, a Peter Green Fleetwood Mac song for like a long time. I didn't. I didn't. Even oh, know. yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, um, I. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, that record in particular, that Judas Priest record, that that. You know that song. That live record's great. You know where they. It's do kind of like song. one of the gold standards of like badass live records, I would say. Yeah, sure. That one in Diamonds and Rust. Um, now that that's a great cover song. Judas Priest doing a Joan Baez song about Bob Dylan. Yeah, <laughs> like it's like all these inception levels of uh, of referential things, but uh, you know it kicks ass. That's the important thing is that it kicks ass. It's great. It's a great version. Oh, you know, one thing we one thing we never talked about is uh, the MC5 song that uh, oh, yeah. you guys did around um, was it Stoner Witch or was it it was it was it was the Atlantic era? I remember that it was it was like on one of the singles. Um, I, well, we we did too. We did uh, um, on the Houdini vinyl edition. We did uh, 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 Ramalana Fa Fa Fa. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Rocket producer. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the other one? You and did? then, well, we also did um, when we were doing the Stoner Witch record. Buzz's wife Mackie was doing artwork for a Wayne Kramer record that was going to come out on Epitaph, and and we're like, oh fuck, well we should call him up and and maybe see if he wants to come record a song, and so somehow I got elected to call him up, <laughs> and you get the short straw. <laughs> and we're like, hey, yeah. Well, I mean, it was just kind of like, oh, let's see if you want to come down here. And, and so I called him up and, and said that we're recording. We're recording down at A and M Records or A and M Studios, and uh, which was the, the great, amazing studio. And we're wondering if maybe you'd want to come down and, and record something. And he's like, sure. What? And we're like, I'm like, ah, MC Five song, you know? Yeah. And he's like, okay. And so he had already been working up uh, a cover of Poison. Which is on? Is that on High Time? Yeah, I it's. I think it's. A, yeah, it's a second record, I believe. If I remember right. I'll, I'll fact check that. <laughs> I think it's on High Time. I can't remember. I, I think you're. I think you're right. It, it's the one. I don't, I don't that, think um, it's. I don't think it's back in the USA. It's High yeah, Time. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's. Uh, it, it's totally on High Time. My bad. Right. Uh, so. Yeah, the third. So, depending on how you so, count it, either the second or the third album. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you, however right. you count it. <laughs> so, yeah. So anyway, he came down we learned it really quickly and recorded it and it came out great. And, and, um, I mean, we, you know, he's like, well, what are you guys going to do with this? And we're like, I mean, we didn't think we were going to put it on the record, but we're, you know, we we're going to use it for something. And yeah. so the trade off was like, can I use it on, on, he wanted to use it for his solo record. And we're like, oh yeah, of course. And, yeah. So great. It yeah. Was great. You know, and, it, and and you know, we were big MC Five fans, so that was a cool thing to do. Did you see the MC Fifty shows? Uh, did we hey, talk about this? Fuck, I can't remember. We talked about no, this. I missed. I missed them, but I I saw them when they came through with what the you know the 
I guess most official version of the band with right, right, with uh, you know Dennis Thompson and and um, uh, and uh, um, uh, Mike Mike. Uh, uh, what's the bass player's name? Uh, Mike Mike uh, Michael Mike Hunt. No. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't remember. Outside. That's I. For some reason, I never think about the bass player in MC5. Uh, well, um, they're all kick ass. I don't know why. Let me. Let me. Yeah. Let me um, Michael Davis. Michael Davis. Yeah. There you go. Uh, to it. <laughs> I didn't uh, even look it up. Uh, the. Uh, I saw. I saw those MC50 shows, and they were. Fa- they were fantastic. And oh, great! Yeah, it was, actually, was Kim playing guitar with them. Yeah, and uh, my buddy Brendan was on drums, and uh, Bill Gould oh, right, yeah. on bass, and um, it was great. It was, re- I mean, and I, I was sort of like, oh wow, like, you know, he's almost as old as my dad, and still is like bringing the damage, Wayne Kramer. Like he's, you know, Wayne, like yeah. doing 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 the moves, like you know, all of it. I was like, wow, this is this is really cool. Like it was really cool just because it was, you know, the songs are good, but it also was like, fuck yeah, man, you get it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> to, to a certain cool. degree. Uh, actually, you know, I forgot to mention, he said hello. Because uh, I, talk, oh, I talked to him I talked to him after the show. Uh, full disclosure, he was more interested in Tony's wife than uh, either of us. But uh, <laughs> he, but he said he said to say hello. Because uh, I, oh, nice. I, I, your name came up. So uh, the only reason I thought of that is because you mentioned uh, doing the song with him. Uh, and what about, so what about the other one? What about um, Rama Lama Fa Fa Fa? What about uh, doing that one? Because that's, that's kind of another one where like I only knew kick literally only knew kick out the jams for like years and not even the album, the song. And then just like, the yeah. then, then I just finally put, you know, for whatever reason, like as obsessed with the stooges, but I only knew that song. Then I got the records and then I, and I was like, Oh shit. Like I thought this was a Melvin song. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, I was a kid, you know what I mean? Like I was, I was like, right, sure. <laughs> I wasn't the encyclopedia well, that, yeah, of that... banal musical minutia that I am now. No, I mean, you know, they're, they were an obscure band, mostly. I didn't know who they were until I joined the Melbourne, so those guys knew all kinds of bands that I had no idea of. Yeah. Uh, that's where I first heard the Stooges in MC5. And, and um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't even know why we did that song. I think we were just thinking of, like, you know, a, a cover song to do for whatever reason. You know, and that one ended up being the one. Um, I know I played bass on it, on the recording, as well as drums, Um because Lori was actually out of the band by that point. But um, other than that, yeah, I don't remember. Don't remember much. Then you also had the, um, what, what, you, you had that record some sometime back that was the, uh, you had the different people doing songs with you. Like you did the, the uh, Venom song with. Um, oh yeah, the God Everyone and Loves and Sausages. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. How could I forget yeah, that? Did, <laughs> right, yeah, we did, we did, uh, um, yeah. Uh, the Venom song with Scott Kelly, Warhead. Um, yep. Wait, we did Warhead and and uh, um, that late period Kink one. song, which totally kicks ass. Oh right, with Clem Burke on drums. Yeah, and uh, um, we did a Scientist song with with Mark from Mud Honey. Um, we did uh, two Bowie songs with uh, with uh, Jim Thurwell from uh, Fetus. Um, which he told us um, that he had, he knew Carlos Alomar. And I think he was maybe going to see if he would play on it at first, but that didn't happen. Wow. But, um, he had finally met Bowie. Um, and it was, I don't know, not too long before he passed away, but um, Bowie was aware that we had done those with him. So Whoa. And I, don't, I don't know. I don't really know. I mean, I, I'm guessing he probably knew who the Melvins were, but he, I mean, he at least knew that we had done those songs. So, um, you know, Paige from Helmet actually had played with Bowie for a while. Get out, he's, seriously? He's some, yeah, he's got some really good stories about, like, well, I know that he told me that, you know, when he got that gig, he worked one-on-one with, with Bowie, learning the songs that he wanted to do, uh, and, you know, just, like, yeah, just, yeah, just, he and Bowie working together. That would that would seem pretty amazing. Well, if I ever get him on the show, I now know one of the things I'm going to talk to him about. Jesus. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> ask him, ask him about hangover Hamilton. Nice. Okay. Filing that away. Hopefully. Hopefully. We talked to Paige, Paige Hamilton. Hangover Hamilton. 
hang over your hand. Okay, gotcha. Ask them what that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you have uh, there, there's that the jam song that's on there too. Uh, oh yes. Then, then these um, uh, uh, um, not well. It's not originally by Ram Jam, but I know the Ram Jam version. Uh, oh right, yeah. Of uh, uh, yeah, Black Betty. Uh, there you go. Ram a lamb. There you go. <laughs> Ram a lamb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there, there's a there was a there was a good amount of Black Betty memes going around a while ago, and I wish I could remember any of them because they they made me laugh. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Uh, it was like product uh, names and uh, oh Black Betty Grandma's Jam. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> I love that stuff. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the. Yeah. Yeah. So, where, so how'd you pick those ones? Was that was that sort of like you pick the song and then you pick the person that's doing it with you? Uh, you know, did you? Yeah. Yes. Pretty much. You know. Yeah. I mean, you know, with Scott Kelly, it was like, oh yeah, he'd be perfect for like Venom. You know, that that would be great. And then uh, um, we did the Queen songs, and we're like, oh, who could we get for that? And you know, this this band Tweak. I think I from Tweak Bird. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's got the voice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, we were like, oh, that would be perfect, you know. And um, that one came out really good, too. I like I liked the uh, the Queen songs. Um, um, yeah, Clem Burke played drums on that on that Kinks song, at least one of them. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, I can't remember what else we did. There's the, well, I mean, we mentioned the, the Bowie songs. Oh, the Brian Ferry, the um, uh, Roxy Music. Oh, Roxy, of course, with Jello. Yeah. Which, which um, obviously that you know that one was was perfect. Have you uh, have you kept up with Jello at all? Like, what's what's that guy up to? I haven't, I haven't talked to him in a while. Um, actually, I owe him I owe him a, a, a text back. He um, what did he, he sent me something the other day? Um, I'm trying to think of what it was. It might have been one of those Bernie memes or something. I can't <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it was. It was. It was. Um, I know which one it was. It was the Bernie on a Black Sabbath record cover. Oh, saying. nice, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's th- there was a there was a really funny kind of Twitter backlash because I guess Ray has control of the Twitter account or something, and like. Uh, he just like posted some kind of, I don't know, some freaking MSNBC liberal thing that like, whatever. And a bunch of people were what? Dead Ken-? Cause it was from the official dead Kennedy's page uh, uh-huh. for Twitter. And a bunch of people were like, what the hell? You know, cut this out. You know, it was. Oh really? It's quite, wow. It's quite the controversy. <laughs> <laughs> just, just because, whatever. you know, it's, it's, it's like, okay. I, I think it, I think it would matter less if it was like East Bay Ray's personal Twitter, but because it was the dead Kennedy's page, the official dead Kennedy's uh, account or whatever. Uh-huh. It wasn't even that bad. It was just sort of like, huh? Okay. Whatever. Weird. <laughs> like it wasn't like a bad take. It was just a weird take of like, that's weird. That's coming from a punk rock band that has not existed for quite some time to count, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We live in, we, we live in interesting times, right? Yes, we do. Uh, uh, what's, what's going on with uh, Red Cross? There were some Red Cross plans before COVID hit. Yeah, there was, we were planning on, on uh, touring in Europe and um probably would have done a, a U.S. tour as well. Uh, we we're hoping to still tour in support of the uh, record that we made. That has uh, a, that badass Sparks cover that's sort of like the... Yeah, right. My Way. <laughs> done it, done it in Rock, do rock to, Band. Yeah, when, when do I get seen My Way? I, yeah, which is a great song. You know, the, you know uh, I mean, it's, it's so different from the... Uh, original it, that Stephen had the vision for that is, is pretty amazing. You know, uh, I think they liked it too, which is cool. Um, I love that there's a documentary about those dudes now. Like I'm I just very saw excited that. to see it. Right. Did you I, see it? Is yeah. It? No, I mean, I just saw, I just saw that it's, that it's like finally oh, okay. out. So yeah, I think maybe Steven's in it. I know. I think he said that he did some filming for it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I wanted I wanted to kind of press him for, for yeah I was gonna say he was played with him like actually when when I had him on I think I drilled him on Sparks information like the first fifteen minutes or so, so. oh right yeah <laughs> yeah well he ended up 
Yeah, he was playing with them for a while, and he even did this thing where they played like every record they ever made. Yeah, he, like all twenty-two learned, nights or something. Yeah, yeah, wild. he learned some in- insane amount of Sparks records. And so, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, I hope he's in the documentary because that was the one thing I was, I was like. First of all, I was like, "Whoa!" Secondly, I was like, "I can't wait to see that." Thirdly, I was like, "I wonder if Steven's in it because he should be in it. If anyone should be in it, I can think." Yeah. Anyway, that's that's the story about Stephen McDonald, maybe in the Sparks documentary, and maybe not, I guess. Uh, but yeah, Red Cross was the that's on that last Red Cross record, which is great. And you didn't really yeah. get the chance to do you, there was Europe stuff planned. There's a whole thing, right. Planned, right? Right. I mean, well, we had done a big tour. We did the tour with the Melvins, um, uh, like a big U.S. tour where we did 54 shows. So we did do that, you know. Um, now our tour in Europe is postponed it's supposed to be being rescheduled but i guess you know we just have to wait this whole thing out yeah see. we'll see so but we'll also I, see know, when every single band tries to, to reschedule their tours all at the same time too right? oh i know i know that's <laughs> going to be the thing too sorry but, Hoopa know, stank has got it that night's reserved yeah i just yeah, like saying Hoopa well, stank i've, I've right. never i don't know what that band even sounds like but they're called Hoopa stank so i can't possibly like it no now you're gonna have to look them up and see and yeah, maybe they're great they're probably not great. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't name one of their songs either. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Point of fact is that, like, the idea is that at some point you're going to make those dates up, and uh, like, but, but I guess what where I'm driving at with it is that, you know, it, it, we're just in these weird, unprecedented times where it's like people that have records that came out. It's like, okay, well, got a whole new record now. Wrote you know, wrote a new record during the quarantine, and uh, all right, what do you do now? Do you just like? Is that like the lost volume of whatever? Do you just move forward? Do you like wait and do those? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll just wait and see what happens, you know. Hopefully we can get back to playing some live stuff, you know. But I think that, um, y- you know, yeah, it'll be nice to get back together and hopefully, um, uh, you know, we, we haven't been doing anything this whole time, Red Cross, that is. So hopefully when we do finally get back together, we can come up with some new stuff as well. You know, something I realized, I don't think I've ever talked to you about this in any fashion, but on the, um, like, the, the, there was a, the, the trilogy, the Maggot, Bootlicker, and the Crybaby, uh, the CDs, they're, like, sequenced so they start in between songs. Like, like it's sort of, like, not normally where the song starts. Well, there's an index in the middle of each song, yes. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. start at the beginning. So, yeah, uh, was the idea that you want to force people to, like, listen to the, listen to it? beginning to end was that the idea i i don't i i I can't remember what we were thinking you know we're like (laughs) i mean i remember doing it i remember we were mastering the record at fantasy with george juan and um and we came up with the idea of doing ids in the middle of the song i can't you know in case you want to go to the middle of the song for whatever reason so but what we didn't realize which is really good was that when we did that that was right around the time when things were starting to be uh, illegally put online. And mm-hmm. somehow that somehow that screwed people up doing that. <laughs> yeah, because if they download so, the song, they're only going to get like the back two thirds of it or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was it, some, somehow, somehow somebody made it that, that like we inadvertently like screwed up people being able to like rip the CD. You know, but, but that wasn't so, the idea behind it. That wasn't like, no. the end goal, right? You're sure it was. Of course it was. No. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No, uh, yeah. That was on purpose. <laughs> right. So, but then now I don't know. Like I haven't really looked on um, on iTunes to see if there's still like, you know, is there more than than one ID per song? I don't know. Because then you'd have to pay like a dollar for half the song, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, if I want to listen to those records, I just listen to them all the way through. But like, that's fine. I, I actually am a guy that normally listens to records rather than like, you know, hey, Spotify, play me whatever the hell you want. No, don't do that. Yeah, I know. That's, yeah. That's it's not, gotta that's mess not with for that. me. If, it's got to really mess with it if, it if it's not, you know, fixed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause, and well, the reason why I thought of it is because we talked about the uh, um, the Peter Green Fleetwood slash Priest Green Monolishi. And I was thinking about the fact, like, oh, yeah, like, that's like, it starts in the middle of that, just like the rest of the record. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> and I, uh, um, 
did, for the original idea for those, was it like, hey, let's do all the, you know, all the rippers, like aggro ones on one, then we'll have like a more kind of no distortion on it, kind of quiet and weird one? Yeah, sort of. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to make two completely different records or three different completely, three different records, you know, that yeah. were all different from each other. Um, yeah, we did all those at, uh, at Louder Studios, which was Tim Green's studio, and he had it in his house. And um, we did the, the the maggot, the crazy heavy metal sounding one that's noisy. Um, that one we, we wanted. That one we made it sound like you know, like like every song ended ended with your speakers blowing up. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's a very aggressive sound. Like aggressive music yeah. with an aggressive, like literally an aggressive sound. Like not right. Not Iggy mix of raw power aggressive, but you know, pretty aggressive. Right. We wanted to make it to where you. Would, the person would be going, my speakers, and like jump for their volume <laughs> knob. Um, <laughs> and then once we finished that record, we tore everything down and reset up and we're going, okay, now we're going to record this record and it's going to be completely different. And I don't think we used any amps. I think everything was direct. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because that's got such a, that's a weird kind of cold, like almost, um, almost like 80s post-punk kind of feel to it. You know, just kind of like yeah. austere. That right. makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I like, like you, that one a lot. I think it came out good, you know, and, and it was definitely a, a departure. What was the uh was the crybaby as it was conceived and came out? Like what how does how does that match? Like uh We knew that one was gonna be with guest stars. Yeah. You know, so the the and it, you know, easier because most of them were covers, I think. There's a few originals, but I think you know, isn't it mostly covers? <laughs> There's a bunch of them. There's like the Jesus Lizard one uh, with Yao, and then there's um, God. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Well, the, the one with you did with Patton is original, right? Uh, that one's original. I remember. There's the one. one you did with Tool. That one's original. God, I, I, I remember. The, the, oh, there's one really good cover on there. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Really it's funny good that. One. You know, it's it's funny the way my brain is wired sometimes. Like, which one is it? What would he possibly be? I'm like, oh. Well, oh, I forgot about it, too, until just now. Yeah. <laughs> Smells like Team Spirit I, I, was, I thought you were talking about Ramblin' Man for a minute. I'm like, yeah, it is a good cover. You're right. I was like, oh, wait, no. That one right. came out good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just doing, <laughs> doing uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit with Life Garrett. That was the one. Yeah, yeah. that's wild. Um, well, I remember we were walking down the street with Greg Workman, who's the guy that runs Ipecac. And we're like, oh, well, you know, what would be a good, you know, I think maybe he even said like, like, oh, you guys should get like some 70s star, you know, that was like somebody who yeah. was like big in the 70s who maybe isn't, you know, and I was like, oh, yeah, let's do like, like Peter Frampton. That would be really cool. You yeah, know? yeah, that would and be cool. And then I think, and then, <laughs> <Joe Walsh. laughs> right. Sure. Well, and then, it, and then it was like. I mean, it was right around that time when, you know, the Leif Garrett story was on VH1 and all that. And I think, I think it was Greg was like, I wish, what about Leif Garrett? Like, oh, yeah. Wow. You know, and so, yeah, I think he just made a phone call or two and kind of found, found him and asked him if he wanted to do it, you know, and he was down. He kind of, I think he knew kind of our connection and liked Nirvana. And so was down for it you know? but the fun part with him was like we ended up going on tour with him and i was gonna say you brought him with on some shows i remember that yeah we did well his see his originally it was going to be his band was going to open and then somehow he decided he what wouldn't wasn't going to do it with the band but still wanted to go <laughs> <laughs> and just to be and, on tour yeah <laughs> well and like and so and do that song. He'd come out and do yeah. that song with us. And so, and then we're, we, so we worked out a couple of songs to do with him, you know, yeah. and um, we did that one. And then we did Now I'm Here by Queen. Oh yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah he's, that's right in his, uh, right down the wheelhouse for him. Sure. Yeah. Right. So, or was it? No, it was fine. I mean, and he, <laughs> okay. you know, well, well he was actually on a Queen record. So. Is he really? No kidding. Yes, he oh. he, he sings. Huh. He's good. He's got the best Hollywood stories I've ever heard, and one I'm of them sure. was about one of them was about meeting Queen and hanging out with them and and recording with them. So, 
Well, there you go. Yeah. And how how was how was he on tour? Was that okay? It was a bit of a handful, but I mean, I really, I think, I really liked him. He he was really, he really was a good guy. Yeah, you know, just troubled. Yeah, I was gonna but, say he has and, and just, troubles. I mean, I you know, I should get his book because I mean, he did have the the most insane stories I've ever heard. You know, just about like he was Brooke Shields' first date stories about. Uh, dating Tatum and Neil and what that was like dealing with her dad. <laughs> wow. And, <laughs> and, you know, um, partying with with Hunter S. Thompson um, uh, and Robert Downey Jr. Not, maybe yeah. not at the same time, but just like, you know, and, and all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, he, he's got such a wild story, you know. I'd read it. In fact, I might order it after we're done talking. Yeah, I know. Well, I keep forgetting <laughs> about it. You know, I mean, it, like, well, we were stuck in a van with him for like, you know, a big long drive, and he just kept talking about all this stuff, you know, and and it was just insane, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, it's like, yeah, who needs the, ra- who yeah. needs the radio? <laughs> well, yeah, like, like, oh yeah, I I I delivered some uh, some lewds to John Belushi on the set of uh, of. <laughs> of the blues brothers, you know? Yeah. 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 NBD. That type yeah. of stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah. Friends with your know, friends with John Belushi. You know, I walk into his trailer and he's like snorting Coke and eating sushi, you know, like that kind of stuff. It's just like, just wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'd be pretty entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Uh, you know, I actually, I'm glad we're talking about that record because I have the uh, just I haven't heard it in a long time, but I have the uh, that mine is no disgrace. I had that I had that song oh, stuck yeah, in my head the other right. day for like no reason, which was um, Thurwell. Thur- Thurwell is on that, right? Is, that uh, was, yeah. How did that all come together? Was that like a you send him something or like you guys all yep. do it together? No, we sent him tracks, and then he came up with stuff on top of it. So, and I think yeah, I don't. I can't remember what else he added to it, but we, yeah, we just um, sent him the song and let him go with it. It's a good tune. There's a, there's a lot going, there's, there's some, there's some really cool lines in there. Actually, like it was one of the things where it stuck in my head. I was like, I should listen to that. <laughs> and they threw it on. I was like, yeah, yeah this, this holds up. This is still good. <laughs> uh, dude, this has been great. Um, so yeah, man, uh, man, I haven't seen it in a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Thinking about that, it's 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 been a while. I mean, I haven't seen anyone in a while, but you know. Yeah. Right. I guess, hopefully, there's gonna be an endpoint at this at some point. Um. Yeah, I think I asked. I think I asked you the whole uh, "Why do you do what you do?" last time. You had a pretty good answer, but if you got anything you want to amend to that, <laughs> or why if it's do change. I do... Oh, I don't you know. know. I, I'm not sure what I told you that last time, but um. I don't remember I either, did... but it was really good. I really liked it. Right. So well, no pressure, but. Why do you know, do what you do, I, Dale? I, I know I stole this from somebody, but, you know, um, I, I do what I do because I have to. And I have to because I can. I think Rush said that first. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if you're going to steal, steal from the best, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> All right, brother. This has been great. Cool, man. Yes, thanks for having me on. Um, my new record, Rat-a-tat-tat, it's out by that. Melvin's working with God coming up this month very soon. Buy that, and we'll see you on Valentine's Day. Melvin's Melvin's uh, uh, Valentine's Day episode with the DCB, the Dale Clover Band opening, and um, five bucks Fugazi prices. I was gonna say <laughs> that's a totally Fugazi price. You're right. Yeah, that's, it is. That's yeah. A, hard hard to uh, hard to argue with, especially with the that's dearth right. of live entertainment in exactly. this day and age. All right, brother. Take care, man. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thanks. Oh, there goes Mr. Dale Carova. Love that dude. Let's do, uh, let's play some of it. This is a rat tat tat I'm seeing it correctly now. Uh, this is Shark Like Overbite. <laughs>
Shark Like Overbite, Dale Crover, Ratatat Tat. This is Brian the Horse Face Goon, which is off of the uh, Yeah, yeah, let it go. Let it go, man. Brian the Horse Face Goon. The horse face goon. That's off of Working with God by the Melvins. It's my uh, it's my guest Dale Crover on the uh, on the old drums here. Live listeners, stay tuned. Sonic Roulette, Music on with Music Off, Lori Barbero, Babes in Toyland. Thanks everyone for listening. This has been Protonic Reversal. ProtonicReversal.com for the archives. Oh, thank you. Oh, very much. The horse face goon. That's Melvin's. That's Melvin's 1983, technically. If we're going to be a, a technical type about it. Dale Cover on the bass for that one. On the bass. Mike Dillard on the drums and Buzz Osborne on vocals. Uh, uh, hey. This has been another episode of Conan Neutron's Protonic Reversal. Thank you so much for listening to it. I'd like to thank my guest, secret and explicit friend, <laughs> Dale Grover, the Mighty Melvins, Dale Grover Band, etc., etc. I think I successfully did not make a self-referential reference that I can make. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. You tell me. Name of the show. As we come to the close of our broadcast day. It's Gunner Neutron's Protonic Reversal. Thank you very much for listening to it. This show airs. My farewell transmission. Radio Nope. RadioNope.com. Thursdays, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. Signing off. Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. ProtonicReversal.com for the archives. Patreon.com slash Protonic Reversal to support the show and to get episodes I've got soon. 50,000 watts of power. $1 a month will get you there if that's a thing that you're interested in. Uh, thanks everyone for sharing reviews of the show, sharing the episodes around. That, that's, all, uh, the that's all helpful. Show's on YouTube now. Sometimes there's video. Sometimes there isn't. 
You ain't the boss of me. This <laughs> microphone turns sound into electricity. Thanks for uh, listening, everybody. I always appreciate it. Uh, maybe I don't say that. Can you enough. hear me now? Out on Route Stay 128, safe out there. You're dark and lonely. Take it easy. Got my radio on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. There is no special girl! It's the, it's the end of radio. The last announcer plays the last record. The last what? Leaves the transmitter. Circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now? Broadcasting if there's no one there to receive. It's the end of radio. As we come to the close of our broadcast day.
emergency! 